At this tutorial, you will learn how to make a parametrically driven prototype of the assembly. We call it iBox. iBox can be placed in the content of your assembly using some guide geometry. To make an iBox, you basically need to repeat all the steps that we have saw in the previous lecture. It means that you need to make a skeleton-driven assembly, assign the materials, set the grain direction and oversizes, as well as place the hardware. Once it's done, you need to define what parameters drives the iBox. So now let's see how to make the new iBox and place it inside of the iBox library. First of all, you need to close all the project in Inventor in order to change the project. Let's browse for the project for the iBox library edit. Once it's done, you're ready to make a new file. Let's start from the new sketch on XY plane and draw a center point rectangle. Now we can define the width and the depth parameters. Finish the sketch and make an extrusion. Again, you can define the height as a parameter. Remember that XY is a top view, so let's define XY plane as a top view on the view group and set the isometric view as home. Now we are ready to save the file in the site of the iBox library. Let's give the name. Now we can use Skeleton Under Sub tool to apply the panels. But first, let's make a new parameter which drives the thickness of the panel. Set it to be 18. And use the sub tool. Choose the sides. In this case, our box will be open, so there is no need to select anything else. Set the thickness as the thickness parameter, hide the skeleton, use trim, select panels to trim and boundary objects. So let's trim the sides, keeping the top and bottom panels. Now we can set descriptive names to the solid bodies. I will speed up this portion of the video a little bit. Once the descriptive names have been set, we can go for the Manage Make Components in order to make a new files from those skeleton solid bodies. So once we have an assembly, let's define the front view as well as the home view. Now it's time to set the materials. First, let's save a document. In this case, we will pick body type of the material or all the panels. Again, let's choose a edge banding of B01 type and apply it on those selected edges. Choose a thickness, position on the top and apply the changes. Now we are ready to place the hardware. In order to do this, first let's define the hardware position using work planes. Now 
Now we are ready to place the hardware from the library. In this case the fold configuration will work fine. Let's pick geometry that we have been asked. And use attach. Now we can use a visibility control to see what, what happens inside of the assembly. As you can see, some of the hardware need to be adjusted. Let's find it in a browser, open configuration table and change the component. In this case, it's enough to change the dowel position from left to right. Now this one can be used as a template to change the other objects, to change the other components. Now we can turn on components again. In some of the cases, it's good to have a skeleton inside of your assembly, but this is optional step in case if you're using some iLogic rules, etc. Because in, in this case, it would be easier to address your iLogic rules to the file. So you can skip this insertion step. Now it's time to defy iMates, the rules that, that will allow you to place this iBox inside of your assembly content. Basically, it's enough to define three iMates, the top, the front, and the side. However, in some of the cases, it would be good to have an option what side to choose, the right or the left. Now let's use Manage iBox Outer to select the skeleton file. Now, when we choose the skeleton, we can say what parameters drives the width, the depth and the height. Also, we need to define the iMates. Once it's done, we can save the files and we are ready to use this iBox in our assembly.